Hello YouTubers, uh, in this video I'm going to go over a fairly detailed analysis on small cap REIT funds. Uh, there's a small cap REIT index, index called KDWY and I've been considering uh, investing in here because it does pay a monthly dividend and I'm going to look at that compared to VNQ which is what I currently own that has um, large and small REITs. Uh, I'm doing this video on August 11th which is a Sunday. If you see the prices here for all the ETFs that I either own or are thinking of owning, it's a pretty down day. Um, the two I'm going to compare are VNQ, which is on the bottom here, and that's the Vanguard Real Estate ETF. It has large, small, medium, all REIT funds. Remember, REITs are um, real estate investment trusts. They <clears throat> invest in some sort of real estate, could be housing and whatnot and also reinvest the dividends and they're good dividend yields in general i'm going to be looking at kbwy which is invesco premium yield equity REIT. It focuses a lot more on the small cap and medium cap space so they're smaller real estate companies first are real are small cap REITs undervalued <clears throat> Real estate investment trusts can quickly become complicated. They acquire properties and generate income from leases, passing that income to shareholders. Right? Um, most of them, just like VNQ, are an underlying index, while small cap REITs tend to carry higher yields. Okay? And we'll see the yields shortly. When you're looking at funds from operations, it's very similar to earnings in companies. <clears throat> FFO calculates depreciation, housing and other properties could go down in value over time because they deteriorate, and amortization of earnings and subtracting that from sales. It's essentially cash flow generated by the REIT. And what we're looking for as investors are companies with positive cash flow that pay you month after month or quarter after quarter for just simply holding on to the fund. <clears throat> Looking at current ratios, Small caps are trading at a substantial discount to large caps. 12.6 times earnings, meaning for every dollar that I invest in, um, I only have to pay 12.6 times the earnings to get that dollar. Large caps are 17.3 times. So it's costing you about $4 more to invest in those companies. So again, by looking at this, these properties, Small cap REITs have overperformed large cap REITs by over 1,000 basis points um, in the, the last time this happened in 2016. REITs are an attractive way to sidestep negative impact of trade wars. Property, assuming the properties are domestic and cash flows generated in the US. If you're trying to sell goods and services between US and China, a lot of companies could get hurt if there's tariffs in the trade wars. But <clears throat> if properties are just in the USA, you know, it's a big company that's just leasing to, you know, keep their income coming. The landowners um, and those landlords are going to be able to keep getting the cash flow in. Based on historical valuation, small caps are at an unusual discount and having substantially higher dividends. Higher dividends is the money that they pay you every month or quarter to invest in those funds. Dividends are one of the best ways to grow your wealth because you get the steady cash flow coming in, and ideally that comes in higher and higher. <clears throat> so we're going to be looking at KBWY. This is the last day. If I go to month, it's going up and down quite a bit. Six months, getting kind of crazy. Year to date, slightly positive. One year, actually a bit lower. In five years, doing all kinds of things. The key number to look at, though, in the small cap yields right now is the dividend yields. So if I go to Seeking Alpha, I go to dividends. The current dividend yield is 6.64%. So if you put $100 into this, you're going to get 0.064%. 6.4% per year, or $6.64. This is actually a monthly dividend payer. So for every $100, divide that by 12, I'm 
We get 55 cents per month for every month I simply put $100 into this ETF. Sure, 55 cents is not going to you know, get you a new Ferrari or anything like that, but um, regular investing, reinvesting this money that you get back into funds and having a long-term time horizon, those are the three ways that uh, you can easily supplement your incomes, whether you're a teacher trying to supplement your pension or if you're in a different career and you need to save for retirement. This is a monthly dividend payer. So if you go to dividend history, this is from July 19. A few weeks ago, you would have got paid almost 15 cents per share that you own. Remember to figure out the dividend, you take the amount, 0.1487, and divide it by the share price. 0.1487 is the dividend you received in a few weeks ago, divided by 29.69. Share price would have would have been a little different, but just for these purposes, it's pretty close. <clears throat> you would have got 0.5% that month. Again, it's a monthly payer. Every month, May, April, June, no, sorry, March, February, January, December last year, it pays every single month. Notice most of the dividends are pretty steady. You have some slightly bigger, slightly lower, but Besides this month right here, 0.12, you have to go back a few years in order to get dividends that are that low. So again, beginning of January, we're at 0.13s. Currently, for the same exact shares, 0.15s. Doesn't sound like much, but if you've been <coughs> regularly investing in here at 0.13, that money that you put in at 0.13 is now getting 0.15. That's growing its dividend. This ETF is giving you a raise by just simply holding that fund. Okay. Our NASDAQ shows more of the dividend history as well. You can see monthly, pretty steady, inc pretty steady dividend payments. How do we take advantage of this? Right now, I currently have VNQ. Vanguard's real estate ETF has pretty much every ETF around, large, medium, and small. Their dividend yield is a little lower, but it's a pretty attractive yield at 3.9%. A lot of uh, studies show in this particular ETF is near 4%. Throughout its past, uh, the gains have been pretty high there. Dividend growth in REITs is a little harder to tell. It does have a positive growth rate. Uh, Ten years ago, with the real estate crash, it hurt quite a bit. But last five years, 4.8%, meaning you're getting 4.8% increases in your dividends. That's literally a raise from the money that you have invested in there. Now, these are quarterly dividends. And as I've said in my video series, one of my main goals is to have my monthly dividends equal $100 or more per month. And currently, the last month I was at $83 a month. So these are quarterly dividends. You do get more compared to KBW. The share price is also more. So I would get about a 2% increase in my dividends by investing in KDW. KBWI compared to VNQ. At this rate, based on the numbers of large cap REITs being overvalued, lower cap REITs having a higher dividend, and lower cap REITs having a monthly cash flow in the dividends compared to quarterly, I'm most likely going to split the difference and own half in the VNQ and half in KBWI. Um, if I'm getting really, if it's going to be hard for me to get to that $100 a month dividend by the end of the year, which is what my main goal is. I possibly will put all of it in KBWI until I get the $100 in dividends, and then possibly put that $100 in dividends back into VNQ to make them equal. So let me just reiterate how to actually get rich with dividends. You want to consistently invest. Any extra money you have. 
ideally at least 10% or whatever you are putting into Social Security or your retirement fund for teachers. Obviously, if you do more than this, the richer you'll get over time. But at a minimum, try to put at least what you're putting into your retirement, your uh, pensions. And if you don't have a pension, 10%. You want to reinvest these dividends. So every month, you're going to get about half a percent of whatever you put in. Those want to go back into the funds. So have those grow at half a percent per month. And then ideally, those ETFs or companies that you invest in will be raising their dividends on their own, so giving you raises. These three things over long periods of time, oops, these three things over long periods of time will significantly increase your dividend payments. Okay. Looking at some numbers here, if you Let's say you do KBWI. Remember, it's about 0.5% per month. Let's say you get a paycheck of $2,000. 10% of that, 0.1, would be $200. Let's say you invest $200 into this fund. $200 just for the dividends. I'm not looking at share price. Five, you'll be receiving a dollar per month for free just for simply owning the fund. Okay, let's say you do it consistently every month. Do a good old classic money chimp calculator. So we're starting with nothing. You're gonna make two hundred a month, which will be twenty four hundred a year. And let's do point five percent. Um, interest rate is six percent. It's gonna give you point five percent per month because we're gonna compound it twelve times. Just in one year, it's not going to be twenty four hundred anymore. It'll be twenty four seventy nine. The seventy nine dollars is just simply holding the funds and getting those dividends. Okay. We do it for ten years. Thirty three thousand dollars. Fifteen years. Fifty eight thousand dollars. Twenty years. Ninety two thousand, almost a hundred, and twenty five. These numbers are going up quite a bit. Every five years, it's not going up steadily. It's going up even faster. That's, again, because of the reinvesting your dividends, getting the dividend yields, and increasing your cash flow. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, again, I'll let you know in my monthly videos what I do if I do invest in KBWI. If it does go down quite a bit, uh, especially compared to VNQ, there's a good chance I'll buy if it's even lower. Um, but I'm still considering possibly doing half and half. Let's have a great day.